Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. Now that we've finished the single player campaign for Star Wars Squadron, we can finally take a more critical look at the game. So far, we've only talked about the positives about the game, especially the immersion factor with the VR, but since I am a super Star Wars nerd who probably notices all the really tiny, tiny things that are off, I thought it'd be good to probably discuss some of the things that the game gets wrong. So let's start the nitpicking. I first read about the Starhawk class battleship in the Aftermath novel Trilogy that came out almost five years ago with The Force Awakens. At the time, this was a huge deal because the Rebel Alliance was mainly using beat up Clone Wars era ships or repurposed civilian vessels. They didn't really have their own capital ship just yet. The Starhawk was supposed to be the first New Republic designed and manufactured capital ship. I mean, it is made from old Imperial class Star Destroyer parts, but hey, just because they rebranded themselves doesn't mean that they're not still a bunch of criminals and ruffians. And so after I read the novel, I spent a lot of time kind of just guessing and thinking about what this ship would look like. So when I heard that it was coming out in Star Wars Squadrons and I finally got to see it, I was pretty excited. And when I did see it, I wasn't disappointed much. I mean, a lot of Legends fans seem to be upset that the Starhawk looks kind of like the Gravemind ship from the Old Republic MMO. Good point, but the Starhawk clearly also has lineage that dates back to the Old Republic designs as well, like the Hammerhead Cruiser. So the Starhawk is central to the Star Wars Squadron's campaign, but how they kind of present the ship and how they use it made me shake my head. So first, this is a ship that's 2,400 meters long, making it 800 meters longer than a Star Destroyer. It has state-of-the-art defenses, armor, and shields, and as one Rebel pilot mentions, covered head-to-toe with weapons and placements. Yet in the game, when a single Imperial-class Star Destroyer called the Overseer confronts the Starhawk, it manages to mess up the Starhawk pretty easily. Of course, the Imperials had some Beridium warheads and other stuff, but it seems like the Starhawk doesn't even open fire with its massive amount of weapons just kind of sits there and takes all that incoming fire. We're not really given a reason why the Starhawk doesn't fire back. It does, however, seem like a huge missed opportunity to see the might of the Starhawk, which according to its tonnage and weaponry, should at least be able to outclass the smaller Imperial-class Star Destroyer. What's even stranger is how much noise is made about the Starhawk's tractor beam, which is apparently 10 times more powerful than the ones found on an ISD. Tractor beams basically generate artificial gravity that push and pulls an object caught in it. It's not really a weapon system because alone it doesn't really do damage, but what it can do is keep an enemy ship from escaping at sublight speeds or push it into a planet or another ship. The fact that the New Republic thought it'd be a good idea to build a massive ship which is centered around this contraption seems kind of stupid. Because warships need to be able to kill. Were this a hyperspace lane patrol vehicle or a towing ship, it might make more sense that they surrounded the design around a tractor beam. Obviously, the New Republic from an ideological standpoint isn't supposed to be heavily militarized, which is why maybe their main weapon is this non-lethal tractor beam, but then why build a gigantic battleship in the first place? During the Starhawk's first encounter with the Overseer, it basically ambushes the Star Destroyer and then pulls it into some asteroids with the tractor beam, which does cause some damage to the bow of the ship. While this is great, why doesn't the Starhawk just launch a bunch of missiles and weapons at the Overseer while it has it trapped in the tractor beam? Again, it's a missed opportunity. And as predicted, ever since Admiral Hondo kamikaze herself during the disaster's Dakar evacuation, the rules for hyperspace have drastically changed. And so now, while the Overseer is trapped in the Starhawk's tractor beam, it somehow is able to jump into hyperspace while clearly surrounded by an asteroid field, and somehow survives. I guess from now on, hyperspace will just be another technology that can cover up some very lazy writing. What also is strange is the New Republic celebrates the escape of the Overseer as if it's a victory. I guess if you're a rebel, you're not used to seeing a Star Destroyer run away. But let's not forget that the Overseer survives and now is able to broadcast to the rest of the Empire that they've seen the dreaded Starhawk project and can call for backup. So this definitely wasn't a victory for the New Republic. Overall, they did a terrible job with the Starhawk. Now, some fans with a great attention to detail have pointed out that most of the cockpits in the games are not done accurately to what we see in the movies. 
That doesn't necessarily bother me though, I kind of understand why they did this because when you play this game with the HUD off, all of the sudden the dashboard of your ship becomes very functional and will have very important readouts that actually help you fly your ship, manage your power and your munitions and point you in the right direction. So this is kind of a function over form design and while it's not completely accurate I think, it does serve as a good way to make the game more immersive and more challenging. Now in Star Wars, there's a wide range of guided munitions that you can fire from a starfighter if lasers alone aren't doing it. For the most part, concussion missiles are the most popular munitions and used against starfighters and capital ships. But then we have proton torpedoes, which are a lot more powerful. They're kind of like the tactical nukes or cruise missiles of Star Wars. They were so dangerous that the Empire actually made it almost impossible for non-Imperial military entities to get their hands on them. The Rebellion was actually only short on proton torpedoes because of this kind of weapons embargo. During the Battle of Yavin, it was actually a proton torpedo that Luke shot down the ventilation shaft of the Death Star. Now, proton torpedoes do come in all shapes, sizes, and potency, but generally, X-Wings carry around six of them in their launcher system. In the game, however, the standard proton torpedo load for the X-Wing is only two. The Y-Wing can carry up more, up to five. Well, that's not a huge deal. How the proton torpedoes perform is, it just seems a little bit off. While the proton torpedoes do a lot of damage, they also seem to move very slow once you fire them. Now, in Star Wars, you actually do have proton torpedoes that can be used against other starfighters. They're specially designed and usually have a smaller yield, but in this game, you definitely cannot use proton torpedoes against other starfighters. As a matter of fact, the proton torpedoes in squadrons are so slow that you'll often outrun them after firing them. And they're also slower than most of the corvettes and frigates you might want to use these torpedoes against. Which makes this very powerful weapon kind of stupid and useless on the battlefield. For instance, if you're chasing a corvette from behind, you oftentimes find that the proton torpedo is way too slow to catch up with it, which doesn't make any sense. Instead, what you have to do is get in front of the corvette and then launch the proton torpedo head on to it and hope that it'll intersect at one point. Now, this might have been done this way so that the enemy pilots have at least a chance of shooting down these larger, more powerful projectiles. But again, it's disconcerting that you're able to fly right by your own projectile with relative ease. Now, I understand why they do this. You want to keep things balanced. The proton torpedoes, honestly, are pretty overpowered compared to the concussion missiles. You can take out a Corvette or a light cruiser with just a few of these. So, I guess it wouldn't make sense if every X-Wing had, like, a bunch of these missiles and were able to do that much damage. While the proton torpedoes and concussion missiles seem to do the right amount of damage, sometimes the capital ships you're flying against feel a bit too underpowered. This might also depend on what difficulty setting you're playing with, of course, but generally a direct turbo laser blast should be able to destroy any ship, even the support ships, in one shot. But numerous times, even in my unshielded TIE fighter and very lightly armored A-Wing, I was able to shrug off multiple blows from these turbo laser emplacements. This process basically made strafing larger capital ships a lot less stressful and challenging than it should be. Lastly, there's something wonky about the game's sense of speed and how these starfighters seem to move, especially the AI fighters you see flying around. Oftentimes in the middle of the battle, you might just see an AI starship just standing still or stuck against a Star Destroyer's hull. Generally speaking, all of the starfighters, including your own, can be pretty easily slowed down to a complete stop. This presents a weird spectacle in the middle of battle as you see a bunch of starships just floating around. But I guess the general speed of these starships are tuned down a little bit and it just goes to show you how fast your reaction times have to be to actually pilot like an A-Wing or a TIE Interceptor. Most of us just are not capable of doing it even in a VR or a video game simulation. Some missions, like the one where you fly through the tractor beam of the Starhawk, really showcases just how slowed down everything is. So generally speaking, this game actually does do a good job at balancing the Star Wars lore between balancing the game so that things aren't completely crazy and the gameplay is off. So I actually commend EA for doing a good job on this one. But as you can see, I do have some beefs, especially about the Starhawk. Um, I think that that whole story arc was a missed opportunity. 
as this is supposed to be a battleship, guys, we should see some more weapons firing. Anyway, guys, let me know in the comment section below uh, about what you think that they got wrong about this game. I know there's a lot of complaints going on with this game, so it'll be interesting to see what you guys have. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. Maybe we'll do a everything right with Star Wars Squadrons. I have a pretty long list, actually. Anyway, guys, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.